we have to get started with the Proxmox cluster. In first node, we will be creating the cluster. So we'll be going here to the first server is here right now. So if I go here to the summary, you can see here the details of Proxmox. So here you can see the view. The server view is the default view here. In one single server, what are the resources available? We will have second server, third server and so on. We can also go with the folder view, which will show me the data center and its nodes, that how many nodes are there and then how many software defined networks are there and how many storages are there. And then if we go with the pool view, so pool will be the resource view, how the resource pool is created. So once we'll create that, I will show you that. And then is the tag view. This is the new view, which is added uh, in the version 8.3. And I'll show you that how this tag view will work. But in this particular video, we will be creating the cluster. So I'll go to server view again. And in server view, you can click on data center. So once you click on data center, as I mentioned that we have only one server in this data center or one node in this data center. So this node is called PSB1, which I've already mentioned. So PSB1 is there. Its name is Proxmox Syncbricks1. While installation, you can choose the host name. And later also you can cho choose the host name, change the host name, but I will not recommend you to change it. Keep on changing it. So our first server is this. Now we will create the cluster. So this will be our cluster and in the cluster, then we will join PSB2 and PSB3. So we will create this or we will define this as a cluster. So how we'll do it, we'll go to data center and in data center, we'll go to cluster and in cluster, we will create our first cluster. I will name it Syncbricks only. And link, of course, I will highly recommend you to use the dedicated network for the cluster. I will also recommend you to use the multiple networks for the cluster. So if I add multiple networks, you can have as many networks as you want for the cluster management. But right now it's only one VMBR zero. So what I'll do, I will click on create in this particular network. I will click on create cluster. Key is generated right now. Task is okay. Now our cluster is ready. Cluster name is Syncbricks and PSB1 is already there in the cluster. We have created the cluster in the data center and in data center one, we have to only create the cluster one time. So once we create the cluster, then we have to go to other servers so that they can join this cluster. So I will click on join information in the first data center in the cluster, join information. Once you click on join information, you will see here, it shows the IP address, fingerprint, and join information. So what we are going to do in the second and third server, in second server, I will go back again to data center cluster and we will click on join cluster. Here we will not create cluster. We have to create only one cluster, depending upon how many clusters you might create. But as in this particular data center, we want to create only one single cluster. So we have created the cluster in second server, I will go and join the cluster. Okay, so it is clear to you, I believe, so once you will create the cluster in the first servers, in first node, we went to data center, we went to cluster, we click the create cluster. Now the cluster is created and down here, you can see the logs also. It will show that cluster is created. So create cluster status is okay right now. Now I will go into join information again and now we'll go to the second server. So this is my second PSB2. So in PSB2, I will click on join cluster, paste the encoded cluster information here. So if I go here, IP address of the primary cluster or primary uh, Proxmox server or node is 192.168.240.2, which you can see here on the address bar also. This is the fingerprint information and this is the join information. You only need the join information to let the other nodes join this cluster. And so you will simply copy this. And of course, you need to provide the password of your root for the uh, this particular server so you must know the password so we'll go back here to uh, psp2 which is another node which has to join the cluster we'll go here to join cluster the moment you click the join cluster you will paste the same information that you have copied from the first cluster which is join information join information will consist of fingerprint and address and all these details so you don't need to copy and paste these details only join information you have to copy come here and paste this information the moment you paste this information, it will automatically fetch the details. And here you can see the link address. Make sure that the link address is chosen, which is 192.168.240.3. And here the peer address is 192.168.240.2. So we will enter the root password here and join sync breaks. 
Now what is happening that checking the cluster API version, requesting the addition of node, and we will just wait for this. It will send the details, it will uh, restart the service and so on. So here it will automatically appear in the cluster. So we will just wait for this. You can see here in the first server, PSB1, PSB2, both are available right now. It might take some time to join this and then once it will be joined, it will be available here. Now you can see here PSB1 and PSB2, both are available here and you can see the information of both the nodes in the same single cluster. So you can see here now in data center, we can see SyncBricks, it has PSB1, PSB2. So PSB2, if I go here, close this, here also when I refresh in the second server, you will be able to see both the servers. So it has restarted the service. I will just log in again. In the second node also, which is 240.3, we are able to see both the servers. And if you go to cluster information, you can see here PSB1, PSB2. If I go here to the summary view, you will see the information of both the servers here and all the CPU and the usage and total storage, all these will be coming together here. And first of all, let us join the third server also. So third server is right now standalone. So what I'll do, I will click here, join cluster and the same information I will paste here. The moment I paste the information, you will see here, it will again ask for the password. I will again type in the password and here link zero, I will choose the link and join Syncplex. It will start communicating with the server. It will start shaking hand and it will then restart the service and our server will be available in the first one. You can see here now we have created this cluster. Cluster is having all these three nodes and all these three nodes are available in any of the node. I have to refresh this uh, server again. Proceed. And now we will log in again in third server. You can see here third node is already there now. So all our nodes are right now available. So I can now access these three nodes from a single server. So from a single server, any server that I log in, I will be able to access it now. So this is the way we have to create the cluster. So you can add more nodes, but we have added these three nodes to make sure that we have the high availability cluster. In this first video, we have seen how we can join the cluster, how we can create the cluster of multiple nodes. And in next video, we will create the networking, the second network adapter that we have in all the servers. We will configure that so that Ceph storage can be configured on that network. Ceph storage will be generating a lot of traffic. So for Ceph storage, we need to have dedicated network so that we have created. In next video, we will be configuring the second network interface, which is already there in the server, mainly for the communication for the Ceph storage. So let us continue to next video and we'll understand how we can configure the second network for the Ceph storage.